Welcome to Uncommon Knowledge, shooting today at Hillsdale College in Hillsdale, Michigan. I'm Peter Robinson. Uh, and since we're at, at a college today, it's especially appropriate to note that you can follow Uncommon Knowledge on Facebook. Uh, Facebook.uncknowledge.com. Facebook forward slash unknowledge.com. Paul Ray, my guest today, holds the Charles O. Lee and Louise K. Lee Chair in the Western Heritage at Hillsdale College. He's the author of many books, including the topic of uh, much of our conversation today, his magisterial 1992 work, Republics, Ancient and Modern. Paul, welcome to Uncommon Knowledge. It's a pleasure to be back. And I hope to give you half an hour or so to prove that for a grown man to write a book of this heft is not as odd an enterprise as it might at first appear. <laughs> Segment one, Republics Ancient. To quote from your book, Paul, from Republics Ancient and Modern, for the comparative study of republicanism, historical inquiry is our recourse. In no other way can we liberate ourselves from the tyranny of the familiar. Explain. Well, we live in a circumscribed world. We think of it as uncircumscribed because it's a global world. But but that very fact means we are radically separated from the past. Uh, and even within, say, 150 years from a past, in which people lived in radically local circumstances. I have a friend who died a couple years ago. And in the 1930s, he was a fellow of the Institute of Current World Affairs. I was one of these fellows in Istanbul. He was in Kashmir in the 1930s, in a little village, living with a uh, school teacher. Uh, and he went back to that village 50 years later mm -hmm. and spent a few weeks living with the grandson of the school teacher, who is now the school teacher in that village. When he first lived in that village, in Kashmir, the people in the village had never heard of England. England ruled India. England ruled Kashmir. But they'd never heard of England. When he went back, the people in that village were discussing Tiananmen Square because mm. they listened to the BBC every day. Mm. Um, that village, when he was there in the 1930s, was in the ancient world. That village, when he returned, was as connected to the modern world as we are here in the United States. Um, we don't understand ancient conditions. We don't understand how they lived, how they thought, and how they looked at things. And uh, I wandered into writing this book because I was working on ancient Sparta. I'm trained as an ancient historian. I, I did a PhD at Yale with Donald Kagan. I studied ancient history at Oxford on a Rhodes Scholarship. I thought, I understand the American Constitution because I've lived under it. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't really understand ancient Sparta, but perhaps I can understand ancient Sparta by writing a short little article in which I compare the Spartan Constitution and the way it worked with the American Constitution. So I'm sort of using American questions to investigate mm -hmm. Sparta. What I discovered is I knew Sparta a whole lot better than I understood the American Constitution. So the little short article that I thought I was going to write turned into a 1,200-page book um, in, in the process of sort of thinking through these questions. Meaning, when I tried to look at us through the eyes of the ancient Spartans, I began seeing things that when I looked at us through our own eyes, I did not see. Paul, you, you write, above all else, we lack a sense of our own peculiarity. Right. Explain that. Well, up until 1920, even in the United States, the majority of people lived on farms. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the land that was important. Uh, since 1920, to an ever-increasing degree, nobody lives on farms. I think it's down to 2 or 3% now. We are cut off from the vision of the world, of the farmer. Uh, we are peculiar in all of human history in that particular. We are also peculiar in living in a world in which reason, logos in ancient Greek, mm -hmm. is applied to, to art, to techne. 
we are living in a technological world. We are living in a world which is transformed every 10 or 15 years. When I went to college, I took a typewriter. I have four small children. They have never seen a typewriter. Right, right. They don't know what a typewriter is. Yes. Um, there was no Xerox machine. When I first started teaching college, we had mimeograph machines. Right. Um, right. Think of the difference that radio made. Think of the difference that the printing press made before that. Think of the difference television makes now. Think of the difference the internet has made in the last few world, years. We live in a world that is being upended all the time. Mm -hmm. um, they lived in a world of radical stability. All no right. technological progress, no transformation. Commerce is not primary. You grow food for yourself and do a little bit of trading on the margins with other people. Right. You, it's just the other day my nine-year-old said, Dad, when you were my age, did you use a Mac or a PC? <laughs> you know the feeling. But listen, but Paul, Republics Ancient and Modern suggests in its very title that there is some continuity. Yes. So what is, first of all, first things first, before we leave this opening segment, what is a republic? Oh, that's a complicated business. Uh, it's the Latin word res publica, which means pu public thing. Mm -hmm. as opposed to the Latin phrase res privata, which means private thing. The private thing is the household, from which we exclude people except for a very small group. The public thing is literally out in the air, where you hold public assemblies. Mm -hmm. um, a res publica is a form of government where there is a public space, that public space is constituted by speech. Our bodies are separate, but we share a conversation. When we say we share a meal, we don't really share a meal. We share a conversation that goes on during a meal. Right. What, puts a, what creates a political community and brings it together is discourse. That is to say, public deliberation concerning what Aristotle called the advantageous, the just, and the good. In an absolute monarchy, there is no public conversation. The res publica is absorbed into the res privata, and it is within the household that everything is governed. The Emperor Augustus governed Rome through his freedmen from within his household. Uh, he governed it the way you would govern a familia in ancient Rome. Uh, and the res publica disappeared into the res privata. So, what a republic is about is self-government of a group of people who are counted as citizens and are therefore members of the ruling order. That self-government takes place through argument, discussion, and thinking. Uh, primarily deliberation, though negotiation plays a role in it. So even in the, the modern circumstances, which you just, just delineated, radio, television, internet, cut off from the common experience of mankind through the millennia of farming. The United States of America today remains, properly speaking, does remain a republic. Yes. All right. 